suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp. That's magnificent. The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. God, that goes on longer than you expect, do not it? Fucking hell. No wonder we don't normally do that. Or well, Danny does it. It's the first time I've done it. Anyway, someone has left their, uh, someone's left their YouTube on. Uh, is it me? It's me. Oh, what an amateur. Just get to hear myself back. Right. Um, you can tell what happens. The um, cat's away and the little rat from Brighton gets hold of the YouTube password and starts doing a podcast and inviting on whoever he wants. Or maybe he's just told by other people to start doing podcasts again. Um, hello, we're a Burkamp Wonderland. Um, we're an Arsenal podcast and we are definitely talking about Arsenal. Maybe not after sporting, but we are after Palace based on where we're at in the league i should probably start introducing people i'm gonna work my way across um it's a couple of people i think actually i'm gonna ask him when i introduce him daniel are you making your debut and is it your podcast debut the helicopter you hear that yeah i yeah. heard it <laughs> <laughs> it's a great day it's a great start it's a great start for a debut um and who else have we got? Femi? How you doing, Josh? Okay. I, I am doing all right. Um, it's been a I'm, long time, hasn't it? It has been a long time. <laughs> I'm sure if I go to the chat box, if they know that I'm here, I can only imagine there's going to be certain comments in there, especially when I've been appearing on Highbury Squad. Um, I know that chat box wants to eat me now um, after I maybe have poo-pooed one of our players, but... Huh. it goes we'll end up hearing about that later um especially as i can finally talk about travis travis how's it going good how are you uh, i don't think we've spoken in a long long time since maybe we played fifa um we all know i don't play fifa anymore yeah neither do i no we haven't uh, actually spoken we just text each other uh in whatsapp every day every day every day like some kind of weird stalkers or we got something going on who knows <laughs> Uh, but I'm sure you will mention the uh, man that was signed from Brighton at some point that I said was not necessarily as good as maybe his form is right, right uh, showing. We're going to um, probably talk about him, yeah. We probably will. Right, let's go into the chat box first. Um, first of the chat box doesn't count because that was me. Um, just checking it worked. And then some guy that I think we all know, Stefan, how's it going? Uh, Avon's in there. Uh, we've got, oh, that's also me. Uh, Stefan's still in there. Englishman in Canada. Um, I don't know who that is. Um, it can't be other Jeff, maybe. No, I'm sure there's other people that are in Canada. And actually, I think Jeff's Canadian, so he's definitely not him. We've got some people in um, in the Twitch. Um, God, I sound old saying the Twitch. Travis, is it the Twitch or is it just Twitch? Just Twitch. Okay, nice. Um Spin thirty three thirteen or is it three three one three? Who knows? Um, but let's go. Uh, and Chris is over as well. Chris also knows um, quite a few of us. I think maybe. Actually, no, Travis. I don't think you've met Chris in person, have no, you? No, not in but person. At least, at least two people on this podcast have met him. Is that missing much? No, he, he's not. Um, right. What else have we got? Uh, it's not the other Jeff. Cool. Let's start with. Um, sporting um femi how much do we want to talk about sporting do we just want to mention we're happy we didn't get juve in the draw or uh um yeah i guess so. um <clears throat> i don't know it was a bit of a um we can talk about as, as about as much effort the players put in in that first <laughs> in the first 60 minutes probably <clears throat> um it was a bit of a strange game wasn't it um to be fair to them, that's one of the first teams that I think just outdone us tactically. They kind of knew every move that we were going to make and they kind of anticipated it and they actually stopped it, which a lot of teams try to stop us but don't actually know how to. But 
I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out on their coach. I really hope he doesn't end up in one of these Premier League clubs because he actually looks like a decent coach because I didn't think their team was up to much, but he got a tune out of them and they pretty much dominated us for majority of the game until extra time, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, I think a lot of the players just didn't look like they were that bothered. It was, it was like, mm, we, we want to win, but if we don't, it's kind of all right. A lot of players were saving their energy. Um, you know, it, it, it was just a weird game, um, especially when you take the lead and then that crazy goal to come back. And then from there, it was just, I mean, they could have scored a couple more, but from extra time, we kind of dominated and looked like we were going to win a game. But, hey, oh, I mean, once you saw the draw, you kind of thought, well, did we really did we really need that? And it would be good to win a European trophy, but, and I've always thought, stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. But once I saw the draw and I thought, you know what, you kind of only really want to win it to be in the Champions League and you kind of we're, we're, we're about what 12 13 points from confirming that so yeah maybe we're better off just just being out of it in the end Regr- begrudgingly i've had to admit it in the end <laughs> for sure um yeah does anyone else want to come in on sporting as well um any thoughts on the game uh or just generally were you either are you disappointed about uh ending our run in europa league Want to go, Dan? No, you go ahead. Um, only just to not hear it on Twitter and from your friends that are, you know, United supporters and whatnot, because that's that's kind of rough. But deep down, we all knew the, the fixture schedule would have gotten a lot tougher making it through. But it always hurts to lose a little bit, you know. You always you always want that trophy. But I think. In the long run, after four one at Palace, it just made sense that you know it's it's better for our running to not have that congestion. Yeah, I feel like the, just that we had to play the whole the, the extra time and the penalty kicks. You know, that was one of the things that 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 was tough for me that I didn't, I didn't appreciate. It's like we wanted to win, but we really didn't. We kind of put a team out that 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 was that should have beat Sporting, but I felt like, you know. When you change up the team too much, I feel like Arsenal don't have the firepower to beat a lot of teams. That's what I've said to the whole Europa. Like when you change a lot, when you change about three or more people on, on our team, it's it's kind of iffy. You know what I'm saying? We're still not there to where like a Man City would have two two first teams. So being out of it is not such a bad thing. I think that we are gonna just press forward and, and, and go for the title, man. So he tried. Um, it sucks that we had to play play so long. The extra time and the penalties, you know, that sucks. And I think for me, I said this when, when when Martinelli missed a penalty kick. I think that if anybody were to miss one, it'd be him because he don't care. He won't, his head won't drop and he'll just keep going forward. Like, like that penalty kick didn't face him one bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Palace uh, in the first 15 minutes, you could tell it didn't affect him. Nope, not at all. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's the big thing that I kind of saw from it as well. Um, to be honest, I thought Trossard might miss it. I've seen him take plenty of penalties in his time and it was close, but it was a good penalty in the end. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, there were, I think generally it was one of those. I think we saw good from whatever the result was when it went to penalties. It was either going to galvanize the team one way or the other. Um, We know what heartbreak has done to them this season after missing out on top four last season. I mean, if missing out on Europa League fires us off towards the Champions League next season, who knows what we can achieve? Um, but let's let's slide off that one and show that uh, 120 minutes midweek did not affect us. Come Sunday lunchtime, I think. I should really know. I two missed the game because it was Sunday. Two here. o'clock. Yeah, yeah. It, was... it was morning for everyone else. It was definitely Sunday because uh, yeah. I know I didn't watch the game. So I'm sure everybody here. knows where I was. Um, <laughs> But at the time, uh, I would say Grimsby, great away support. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Palace. Um, it's great to see them lose twice in a week. Um, Femi, uh, vengeance for Vieira, I think. Um, yeah, it's quite funny, isn't it? That his name was probably the loudest 
names sang in the stadium for most of the game, <laughs> which I don't. To be fair, the Palace fans came with all their little ultras with their black t-shirts, um, with their fireworks at the start of the game. Within ten minutes, you didn't hear a, a peep from them for the rest of the game. And to be fair, that's unlike Palace away fans because they are one of the loudest fans, but they seem to have been just had everything beaten out of them now, don't they? Um, we just we just went about business. I, it, it's so weird to watch Arsenal just play like this, you know. Just once that first goal goes in, the whole everyone just just knows. Okay. There's the calmness around the team, the fans. The I'm sure it's like that online as well. That this team just it, it, it's not what you expect anymore. We just go about business and we handle our business. We 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 know what we have to do. Everyone knows their jobs. And now the the style of play, the interplay, the the connections, the passing. It's just so so good. And we just start games. Sometimes we start like just especially in the big games we start like a house on fire but in some of these smaller games you know we start by just feeling them out seeing what they're about um and then once we once we get going there's just just the goals just come in like little little bundles as well but it was overall like a really really good performance really strong really encouraging um and just nice to just take players off at decent times rest players put players on that needed game time um yeah yeah that that i mean that's overall my thoughts um we can go i'm guessing we'll go into more details of each goal or whatever but yeah that's overall my thoughts yeah definitely i think one thing um yeah that we should definitely touch on as well is just uh rob holding performance before um, before we get on to rob holding can i yeah. ask Femi, is the the support in the stands like louder and better than you've ever seen before right now during the season and during this run oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. every game as well um there's not a game that you <clears throat> let me think is there a game that people moaned i think there was one maybe the bournemouth game where people were giving away the ball a lot and there was a few moans, but generally it's it's usually concede a goal, drown out the away fans with noise. <laughs> you know what? They can't even we can't even hear them celebrating. Yeah. It's encouragement of players. It's um, you know obviously Arsenal have a lot of songs at the moment. Yeah, quite a lot of players have songs, which is compared to like <laughs> maybe even up to five years ago, is two or three players the. Cazorla's, as you rue, but now you know every nearly every player has their own song. And to be fair, the players give a lot of energy. The manager gives a lot of energy, and it just transmits through the whole stadium. Now the away, obviously, you, we see the away fans. It's it's incredible, like you know, just the atmosphere and just everything at the moment around the club is such a vibe. So long may it continue. I say. Yeah, it's the very. After watching Arsenal for so long, like just watching, like I'm so used to imploding or not scoring first or like just doing something that just like, what are you doing? It's just so, re it's just refreshing. It's watching them and just yeah. playing shows through great on football and they just scoring first, scoring early. Like before you had to like rely on Alba or Van Persie or Sanchez to score. And like now we have, I mean, you know where it's coming from. You don't know which direction, left, right, center. You don't know who's going to, man, Jacques might pop up. So it's so refreshing just watching them just having PTSD, like the ball goes in the back. Even putting even submit or putting holding in instead of having sleeve out. I still wasn't worried. Anytime when I'm like, yeah, you know, we're gonna take care of it. Like it's so refreshing watching Arsenal now because they play such good football. And and it's just it's just refreshing, man. That's all I gotta say about this game. Like for just for an overview of it, just watching them, it just it just makes me happy. Just while I wake up, I'm like, let's go. Who we gotta play today? It doesn't matter who it is. And it's, just, it's it's really really good, man. It's a little bit more stressful in between games now with the run in though. When, yeah. it, when we were in eighth, yeah, when we were in eighth place, it was like eh, whatever. We're playing. I'm gonna watch it, of course, because I watch every game. But expectations are low. Uh, what are we gonna do? Get seventh? Get conference league? But man, this year, <laughs> it's like every game right now is just like, uh, and then we come out and we just yeah, we play like that. It's crazy. Yeah, I yeah, think I, I think, definitely yeah. haven't this this feeling about Arsenal since, well, 
early teenager. Sorry to uh, age any anybody yeah. down, but I'm thinking like late late nineties, early noughties. Um, it's the last time I can think about an Arsenal team just going into every game and knowing we should be winning it, or at least putting in a performance to win it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Palace did not worry me, irrespective. And it's great to see um, not just the fan base in the stadium, which is obvious. You can see the mood everywhere now, um, especially around Twitter, um, which I know well, isn't always that. the best. You do say yeah, that, I, I do say that. <laughs> maybe maybe it's my timeline or maybe yeah, you cleaned I've, up just, your timeline, I've cleaned up my timeline pretty well. Um, <laughs> But I think we've just gone on to just ignore the serial moaners. We just realised there's always that guy. Inevitably, he's about 50-something. Um, he sits behind you wherever you are in the stadium and will find something to moan about. Um, irrespective I guarantee of you that yeah. if we don't win the league, there will be people calling for Arteta's head on your timeline. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think even if we win the league, There'll be people moaning because we didn't get, we didn't go invincible or something like that. There will always be something to moan about. Um, but yeah, I think otherwise there's just that positivity going around the club. But let's talk about the goals as well. Um, I did see the goals. Uh, we could talk about um, Martinelli. I think, uh, Travis, you were talking us through the Martinelli goal. And uh, I think I saw a shot from Ramsdale. Um, he basically predicted it, right? Yeah, from behind the net they had that view. <laughs> he was uh, he fainted. He did the left the step over and the the left to the far post, and he called it. He stuck his arms out like it was all him. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, up until that point, I feel like Saka had been a little, started a little bit slower. Uh, he had some good interchanges, but was missing the final ball. And not that this was like the most dangerous pass, but. It was a good area. He finally started getting his uh, rhythm. And what can you say about Martinelli? I mean, that quickness to push it to the left and then fire it right corner is, you know, he's he's our best finisher. Without a doubt, he's our best finisher. He has the most amount of goals to XG ratio. Uh, I mean, he's fantastic. And getting that first goal is important. Yeah, and I think we can talk about the uh, the star boy on the other side as well, getting the second. Dad, you took us through that goal. Um, I think uh, it went to VAR, didn't it, to check for his offside? Yeah, he's a bit offside. It, 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 it looked like he could have been. I, VAR is, is touchy, man. It's so so intricate with the VAR and everything. It takes out the, the whole steam out of, the, out of the stadium. But, you know, he's always on. He's quick-footed, man. You, you had the give and go, the wall pass, and it was just it was beauty, man. Uh, Jacques, I mean, Saka is just coming to his own skin now, man, and and he's proven everybody wrong that doubted him, and he's just doing he's doing a really really good job for us, man. Yeah, sure. Sorry, go on, Femi. Funny enough, I didn't think he had his best game on on Sunday. Funny enough, because but one thing I was saying is he's getting to that level now where he knows when to do it. He knows when to turn it on. He knows when to rest. So he plays in, and this is what I like. He plays in little bursts now. He doesn't go like 100 miles an hour or he's always involved in the game or like he, he, um, I'm not singing the chant, by the way, the Martin, <laughs> the Martin I'm not singing the Martin Lee chant. <laughs> go and look on YouTube. He sings it well himself. Um, so yeah, he, he, you know, like these elite players like Salah, like, um, uh, I'm not comparing him to these players, but I'm saying they know when to to manage their performance, when to get involved in a game, and when to not. And he's starting to learn that. Um, who is he up against? Tyreek Mitchell. I swear mm. to God, I've he never broke his seen... ankle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a defender. Every game Saka plays, he's minimum two on one. Yeah, two on one, if not three on one. Every time he gets the ball, this game. Palace and Zaha just decided, you know what? He's, I'm not tracking back. You deal with it yourself. <laughs> Mitchell was constantly begging Zaha to come and help him. There was a point that he just he just sat down and pretended he was injured because he was just getting cooked and roasted so much. It was it was just non-stop. But the problem was Saka just didn't have the final ball until you know he put the ball in the back of the net, of course. But that that that's it. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's absolutely insane the season he's having. But I guess some of us can uh, say they saw it coming. Uh, he's definitely been one of the star players for us. Um, yeah, he's third I, in the Premier League in goal involvements. Behind, yeah. Uh, only Holland, Holland and Kane. And that's just an insane record when you think about it. Bearing in mind, Haaland just does nothing but scores tap-ins and uh, Kane's a fraud. Uh, well, yeah, they were saying the other day on um, somewhere I heard that only two players in Europe have uh, double figures in um, goals and assists in Europe. It's Saka and the kid from Roma. Not Roma, from Napoli. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's no way we're saying his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Trivac, I can't even Trivac, spell it. Trivac, in Europe, yeah. yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, uh, Trivac, it's Trivac, an insane Trivac, record Trivac, when you Trivac. start looking at them. I think we're on course for what four players to be on um, what ten goals and assists. Um, that's if we take Trossard's uh, record at Brighton into account as well. But I think yeah, I'm sure by the end of this season, season, yeah, by the end of the season, he'll have that wrapped up from just an Arsenal perspective. I think the we've way been asking for that, though. We were asked for that. Like I've been asking for that. For we need more. We need. We can't rely on one person to score. Like I've been saying. Like, like just this whole where's coming from aspect is fantastic, man. Because you can't defend that. You can't no. say okay, cover this guy. Because like I said, Saka gets double teamed all the time. All he needs to do is get rid of the ball a little bit earlier. I feel like, yeah. and 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 I mean, even if he doesn't, it's still we, we. You never know where the goal's coming from. Yeah, and we can talk about uh, a player who's come back and found his goal scoring. Well, I say form. Uh, he's found how to score goals. Xhaka, you know, coming in, getting two goals in a, in two games. Um, it's it's crazy to see his change. And Femi again with the being in the grounds. Um, Xhaka has clearly, I think, won everybody over, um, and he's just some kind of superstar. He is, he is. Um, he is, um, I don't know what to say. He, he's got his own song, man, and he gets, he gets, he gets quite a lot of love now. Um, do you know what? He, he puts in the effort, doesn't he? You can tell that he's a leader. He's a leader in the group. Um, but what, what I like is he's not the only leader anymore. Whereas a couple of years ago, you, could, you knew he was the only leader and he kind of downed tools when he was kind of rejected as the leader. But now I'm sure he feels, you know, like okay, this is a stronger leadership group, and he 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 had a bit of a downturn in terms of goals and assists, and I know that he was getting substituted quite a lot during that time because I'm pretty sure Arteta demands a lot from a player in the position that he's in. Um, so it's good for him to get back in the goals two in the last two. Um, he's he's got like what four or five goals now. Which is pretty yeah. much the same as as um, both of our strikers, basically. <laughs> I know they've missed a few games between them, but that's that's, that's pretty good going for him. And like you said, when you get, I'm looking at our goals at the moment. We've got 66 goals, which is unthinkable compared to a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, 66. City have got 67, and we've got what we've let in 26 goals, which is the just behind City's 25. Somehow Newcastle have only let in 19 goals, but that's all, or whatever. They've only scored 39. But it's just good to see us getting goals, you know. It would be really good to get up to, uh, you know, over the 80 goal mark, which is when Arteta was saying that a couple of years ago, I just used to look at him and think, how are we going to move from like 30, 40 goals to, to, towards 100 goals that he says you need for the title? But, but you know, we, we've improved a lot and I can only see us improving more, to be honest. A lot of people think this is a one-off, but I can't see it as a one-off now. I think we'd, we're set to get better because we've got young players that are, even during this season, you can see they're improving. Yeah, I think one player drops out of that group and you've got three others that can make that space. And we're talking about Xhaka and the leadership group. It felt like at times during his tenure, he was the only guy that would call people out. And of course, he then looks like the bad guy. Um, to everybody, but yeah, you know, stop bringing in players like Kieran Tierney. We've got Odegaard here who will call players out. And Jack obviously, yeah, Zinchenko Crazy. loves to call a player out. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll uh, we'll talk about the uh, the video that's been going around of his first touch. Um, hmm. Man, that guy's got technique. Um, I was showing it to my partner, and she's like, "Right, so this is what 
a guy who's is slightly better at football than me is and here's a professional football player this is the kind of step up that you'll see in it not even close different gravy the um, last one was insane uh, yeah yeah as soon as he watches it come in um right so i think in terms of palace uh there's definitely some more we should talk about from the game a um, little bit disappointing to concede from a set piece. It feels like we've got a little bit... Something seems to have dropped off in the last couple of weeks. I don't know, Travis, if you've seen anything uh, specifically, maybe in the stats, that it just doesn't feel like we're defending corners and set plays as well as we have been. Well, we went how many games like at the end of last season at the beginning of this season without giving up any uh, set piece goals at all? And I feel like it seemed... It's like if we can see the goal nowadays, it's going to come from a corner. Uh, it's it's baffling, but uh, uh, luckily it hasn't affected you know any any points that I'm aware of. No, I don't um, think we've we've, so we've gotten much. away with it. But how much longer we're going to get away with it? I don't know. We're going to look back on a goal at the end of the season if, if that came from a set piece that made us drop two points, and you know we end up tied on points with City at the end of the season. We're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be a hell of a turnaround for us to, uh, I think, for us to actually, no, I'm not going to say it because I will jinx it. I'm not even going to mention. We just have to know. win at City or lose or draw at City. We cannot lose at City. If we do that, yeah. the t- title's ours. They have to make up five points at that point or eight. But yeah, if we lose, true. it's two points. So... That's one draw along the rest of the way. And we play at Poole, at um, Newcastle, home to Chelsea, home to Brighton. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I think we've got a good run. Uh, I'm certainly penciling in um, the Brighton home gate as a uh, potential place that the title is uh, is decided. Um, yeah, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself at that point. Yeah, I think you're looking. Do you know what? I yeah. just don't. I'm just looking. You know what? It's so crazy. Last season burned me so much that I can't look past the next fixture. You, you, last season, when there was 10 games ago, I saw all the predictions on all the podcasts. And they were all saying, yeah, we'll pick up point this point here. And then we came back from the international break and we lost the first three. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that anything, and it was the, the probably the easiest three in that run as well. So anything can happen. Let's just, I just think each game on its own merit. Let's get through, get through Leeds first. City got a tough game that weekend. Let's get through that. Let's see where we are then. And then when you go to Anfield, you know, let's just take the game not on history but on the team that we're playing rather than history because we've been to we've been to Old Trafford we, get, we personally I thought we were really good there we yeah. went to Tottenham and won went to Chelsea and won so why not let's let's deal with Leeds and then we I just can't look past each game because if you if you start looking at each game every game it looks scary because there's a lot of tough games there but if you just break them down one by one January we had a tough run we came for it all right we've had other tough runs and we'll, we'll, i think we'll be we'll, we'll, we'll get there <laughs> hopefully says. how do we feel with uh holding going up against leeds press or uh, at anfield i don't think holding worries me against the leeds press so long as it's not aronson aronson when i've seen him is the best leeds player by a country mile when it comes to pressing um I don't know technically if he's the best player there, but uh, he worries me against Partey. That's where I think the press will happen. Um, I think Holding is sure enough and with Ben White next to him, he can just lay that pass off and I trust Ben White to do the right thing with it. Um, I don't know what everybody else thinks about um, about it. But yeah, especially coming against, was it the entire um, US men's national team central midfield? Mm-hmm. That outplayed England's midfield? In the World Cup, hey. that's all right. Good thing we've got no English midfielders. <laughs> I think holding is all right, man. I think holding can hold his own for a couple of games. I think if you have him in there for too long, you might, you might, you, you might find him out really quick. You know what I'm saying? But holding's all right, man. People did uh, don't rate him too highly, man. But holding holds his own for, for for when he comes in, he always does something. He always shows some what, what he's worth. You know what I'm saying? He's always worth being in the squad and I, I, I appreciate what he does 
I think that um, you can't have minutes more than like three games. After three games, I think he's like, all right, holding it's time to get out. So I hope Saliba comes back before the Liverpool game. But holding always does something good. Like remember, I, I still remember the the game versus Diego Costa. I'm still I, I still remember the dreams about that game. Like oh, that was such a great game. So holding doesn't worry me so much, but in the long run, he does. Short term, not so much. I'm hoping yeah. is one of those, you know, keep him away from France, and uh, he'll be back for Leeds. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, the old uh, Holland groin problem or the Marcus yeah. Rashford. He looks uh, so happy on the sideline at the end of that sporting game, like nothing yeah. happened. So <laughs> it's like, I wasn't expecting a several weeks rumor, which they haven't really confirmed yet either, have they? Have they said anything about it? Other no. than well, we're going to look at it again. I think the only thing I'd be worried about is if there was a documentary team setting up around Saliba, um, but I've not heard about that. So uh, we should be all right. Um but yeah, I think that is one thing that over this international break will certainly be the thing we look at. But again, as we've mentioned, we've got such a well-rounded squad now that I'm almost not worried about if we lose a player. Because I think, despite what uh, Ten Hag says, um, we've lost key players from that starting eleven at every point during mm-hmm. this um, during the season. They even what Ramsdale's been playing with an injury since God knows how long. Um, yeah, he doesn't do he doesn't do from the goal kicks anymore, does he? He, is, he doesn't uh, do many. Yeah, doesn't do many. But I'd have to ask uh, Femi fully on that one of how many goal kicks he's taken because you don't always get that shot on TV. Uh, he does, but he, he, yeah. he does a lot of the short ones. So yeah. they've what they do is they've actually switched up the goal kicks recently, where they um they <laughs> it's quite weird actually. They they shift Gabriel all the way to left back a bit higher up. Mm. So that gives them the option to go a little bit longer or shorter. And then what they do is they move the left back, usually Zinchenko, but the other day Tierney was doing it as well. They move him right into the box and then he either takes a goal kick or receives a goal kick and they build up the attack from there. It's, yeah. To be honest, like the way that we build up attacks right now is absolutely insane. Like we, If you watch the games that we play now, we actually set traps for teams, which I never... Th- thought I'd ever see Arsenal doing we literally you know draw them onto us and then just just release that that I think there there was there's been a couple of goals that if you just look at it that the, the what was it the the goal that Saliba set out last week or, or opened up the pass it was mm-hmm. Fulham wasn't it yeah and then this jacket even this jacket goal the other day that we're talking mm-hmm. about it was that kind of move as well where you draw the team onto you and then the, the quick that that was a to be fair that was a really good goal when you look back at it the quick one two between Zinchenko, Xhaka, Trossard back to Xhaka yeah. it's just football you know that's that's it it, it it looks so simple but it's something that you can tell they worked for months on that you know he he's been working on this for months you know <laughs> imagine the days when we, when Emery came in and tried to get us to play that style of football from the back and Petrček was trying to kick the ball into his own net. <laughs> they did the same they did the same thing essentially but almost a little bit more beautiful against Fulham that Jaka just kind of bad touched it right to Leno which how would have been the goal of the season. <laughs> you see that Rams um Rams actually had a, had a um had a ball out to Sock at the end of the game as well. That was insane. A goal kick. That yeah. was a great like whoa. Like, look at that the way it's a Rams Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I remember, I think it was Rob Holding speaking about it when he was playing up against Ramsdale, I think Sheffield United, and just mentioned to Arteta. So he was like, that kid can take goal kicks because he was just pinging the ball constantly up to, I think it was David McGoldrick probably at the time. Um, and just every time it was laying at the feet of the centre forward. And Holding's like, I just can't get anywhere near this to challenge for it. And obviously you can see how good the distribution is to Ramsdale. Um, and I guess if he was, um, you know, if any other uh, nation or any other nationality, he'd be the best goalkeeper in the world um, or dubbed that. But, you know, he's English, so um, he has to go behind old T-Rex arms um, for, for starting choice for England. Um, but I'll, I'll try not to bring too much Southgate hate into this. Um, but I know it's not even good to... enough to make his squad. Uh, it's confusing for everybody. Um, and even better, you know, two players have dropped out injured. So just 
burn the players that you've got into the ground instead. I'm sure everybody's club yeah, really I'm happy about that. Very worried about that. I'm very yeah. worried about that. Saka Saka's, Saka's playing a full yeah, yeah two lots of ninety with, minutes. With is Sterling's out of the squad as well, isn't it? With Sterling out and Rashford out. I'm so yeah. worried that Saka's going to play two ninety minutes. Sterling yep. didn't get picked at all, did he? And it was Mount that dropped out. So yeah, yeah. it'll be and Mount dropped out as well. That's another it's, attacker. Yeah. So it was Mount, Mount, and Sterling, Mount and Rashford. Rashford. Sterling yeah. wasn't called up. Um, and Who's playing? Foden. <laughs> well, we all know it's Kane. Jesus. We all know it's Kane, isn't it? It's Kane Who's and another. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Calvin Phillips, who's played seventy minutes all Ooh. season. Got he called up. Called <laughs> Who? He did not get called up, did he? Calvin Phillips he is in the midfield. And yeah, Conor Gallagher. Phillips is a, and Conor Gallagher as well. Who comes on for five is minutes. Harry Maguire there as well. Harry Maguire. Oh, Harry Maguire's Harry in there. Dyer. Yeah, oh, I'd nice. give Harry, Harry Maguire a little bit of a benefit of the doubt because when he does play for England, he plays quite well. Um, but yeah, that's just yeah the, the other ones are just, players. yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely bring other players in. But anyway. Um, I'm not a fan as a whole. He plays well for my country, so even though his league form is shit, not to you know worry about that. Uh, well, anyway, I've given up on Southgate now. He's he's just a Palace fan in my eyes, and uh, that's it. He's gone. He's dead. I've burnt my waistcoat. Um, every waistcoat I've got. That's it. Um, so yeah, we should talk about probably the international break. Um, and there's a couple of injuries. Obviously, we've spoken about Saliba as well already. But the news today that Tommy Asu is out for the season, um, I guess that's a frustrating one for us all um, involved. Obviously, the, it's a pretty innocuous way that he got the um, the injury, picked up the injury. Um, but yeah, does anyone want to come in on um, how they feel about... Um, how do you feel about that uh, news on Tommy RC? Uh I can jump in. Um, yeah. I think it's more serious than they're letting on. Because if you read the report, it's so short. And it, all it says is significant knee injury out for the season. I think he's out. He for had successful the surgery, they said. Yeah, I think he'll be out for the, the start of next season as well. I've Probably. got that feeling. And it, we... we Definitely have to do something about that right back yeah. spot in the summer. Either you get a player that can play right and left, and then because I can see Tierney leaving as well, so you're gonna and we're yeah we're we're pretty short at fullback, so that's probably a position that you could either promote and. But the thing is, with no Europa League next season, you can't really bed in any young players as much as you usually do or you used to, so. You probably have to get in a right back, especially they want, uh, next season. They want, or they were looking at Fresneda from, mm. from yeah. Spain. I don't know much about him, to be fair. He's young. He's like a, a young Zinchenko. Yeah. Um, More, yeah, I think when I had a look at him, he was like, yeah. Not, not the quality, but the profile is young Zinchenko. Yeah, and I think that's, a, that's always a question is what we get. Next, and obviously we've got ten games. I think what probably helps is we don't have the Europa League run. To uh, if we did have that, then I think going for Ben White for the remaining games in the season, it will put a lot of pressure on him. We've seen how um, potentially he can get to 60, 70 minutes in a game, and he really needs to come off because of the um, amount of work he puts in yeah. up and down that right hand side. Um, yeah. So That's right. they I had Party go back to right back. And then uh, Jorginho comes in to play the Emerald. And I think that's going to be what he does because um, that's what Party did to at Atletico. To end for... games? To finish games, you mean? To, to, yeah, to finish you, games. You yeah. better hope yeah. that you're winning at that point because yeah. you don't really want to be taking your best central midfielder out of the team. You're weakening yourself in two positions yeah. in that yeah. that situation. Yeah. yeah, the only other move he I did think that at Palace, was... though. That's what he did at yeah. Palace. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that at all. You just don't like Jorginho, though, Femi. You no, no, put this I, out. no, I personally don't like him. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm, especially in home games. Maybe he's decent for away games, but at home when we empty out our team, it's scary watching him chase players around. <laughs> I, I thought that would have been a good opportunity to put the young fullback in um, for his debut when you're 4-1 up at that point. 
it, you know, I know Arteta doesn't generally give young players debuts, apart from one 15 year old that I still trying to wrap my head around why he got his debut but we've seen you know Omari Hutchinson's the Walters and all these other kids sit on the bench and they never no matter what the score is they never get on but I thought it would have been a good opportunity to to just give him a taste of of first team football um and he's a fullback you know yeah hopefully you know they want to sign uh, in one year to his first contract I think that's what he was doing yeah that doesn't seem like it's going to work did it. Yeah, I guess I'd I'd probably say if I was going to bring a right back on for their debut, um, I probably wouldn't put up up against Zaha. Um, that's the only. Uh, yeah, but Zaha wasn't playing at that on that side by that point as well. He was oh, playing he moved front. central. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, playing against are you sorry with all due respect? I yeah, mean, that's. It's a bit, bit. <laughs> oh, it's when I a saw uh, Ayu you know. <laughs> was booed when uh, <laughs> when I saw him come on uh, against Brighton. Uh, so yeah, there's certainly no love lost, um, <laughs> even within the Palace uh, crowd. No wonder that's why they were so sad for me. You should see some of the, the the Palace strikers' goal records. We looked at it the other day at the game because it was oh yeah, just, just like three goals and two goals in thirty matches and stuff like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. And they used to. That's the thing that's changed about Arsenal, right? There's that's when one of those players would get into form. Yeah. It used to be Benteke, right? Benteke <laughs> yeah. would uh, turn up at the Emirates after not scoring in about four hundred years and bag himself a brace, and then go exactly. into next season, that come Mutata, back to the Arsenal. Mutata, Mutata, Mutata guy last oh, season when we, they beat us three 0 he terrorised us. I haven't even seen him ever since. <laughs> oh, Mutata! I saw him. Yeah, I saw him at Brighton again. Uh, he was about 30 <laughs> seconds away from getting himself sent off. <laughs> that was the only thing he did in the game was nearly get sent off. Um, it's it's crazy. Just, yeah, their striking record. Um, but yeah, I think back to, back to Tommy Arce. Obviously, we were missing something with him there. Um, his flexibility and something we can deal with in the summer. But I'm guessing we're generally comfortable if Ben White, you know, touch wood, stays fit. Uh, for the next ten games, he's he's the obvious choice in there, and um, I probably wouldn't look at Kivia coming in. Um, you know how much Arteta loves a left-footed player to play left centre back, and that's it. He's not going to put him over to the right side at all. That, that was a smart move, though, to get him back in there so that we yeah. didn't have the the tasting uh, go go on for the rest of the season of mm-hmm. his performance at Sporting, which was pretty shocking yeah I, I think he had uh there was that one mix up between him and turner um and then i felt generally he did all right but yeah definitely good to get him out there and even from his point of view just put things right a little bit give him five ten minutes against a striker that you know is very little threat to you i mean they their goal was scored by a left back who now plays in central midfield for them um mm-hmm. it's it's a good place for us to kind of be and to blood those kind of players. Um, but yeah, should we look towards, uh, I think we've spoken about um, Leeds already. Is there anything else we're worried about Leeds and talk about the, the running as well? I know Femi, you're not going to want to talk about any games past Leeds, but if there's any other thoughts that people have got on uh, games coming up. No, we guys got to take them day by day. They take game by game. And just focus on that. That's what we need to do, I feel like. Um, you know, we have all these podcasts and internet and everybody has their thoughts and beliefs. And you just got to take this game day by day because it's hard. And you start thinking, I'm going to get this point, that point. We have 15 points you do in the group bundle and you just think of all the points you get. And then when you don't get it, you just, at least for me, if Arsenal lose, my, my week is shot. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Like, don't talk to me like a whole week until next week. And then, then we'll talk about it again. But you just got to take it day by day, man. Arsenal, are, we, we are, our mentality is way stronger than it's ever been. Our team, our, our team the togetherness is way better than it's ever been. Our coach, our fans, everything is good. We're, 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 we're vibing and everything's just, just purring right now. So I think we play leads. I think we have, we have a better team. We have a better team than anybody. We play the best football in the, in the EPL, I think. You know, we might not have the best team, but we play the best football. So, I don't think I don't think we should be afraid of Leeds, but I can't wait to play them. I came in for April first to come around so we can so we can get on the field and, and play them again. 
Yeah, for sure. I don't think I can add anything to that. Um, yeah, Leeds is a game that doesn't fully worry me. I've seen the performances against teams like that get an early goal and we're away, I think. That's what I see from there. No, we're home. Um, sorry, I mean, get a first goal away. I meant oh. just score. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get an early goal, uh, you know, first 20 minutes and then you're not kind of hanging on. I've seen it too many times now with, uh, you know, getting to nil-nil after 70 minutes and dominating games and you know what will happen. Either you're going to get bit yeah, and, but we've got we've got yeah. Gabriel Jesus back now as well. This we little do. extra dimension on our on our on our bench might have Eddie back by then, so we will have more to throw on if if you know things things are not going as planned. Yeah, and how good is Jesus looking as well with his oh, man, uh, that flick he had, that flick that he had in, when he came on, that little back heel he had in, in, in the, the back pass to him that just missed him by a hair. Oh, he looks fantastic, like he doesn't skip the beat at all. Yeah, it, it's insane. He, I think he had that one chance, I think it was against Sporting, where I think if he was back for maybe just one more week, he buries it. Um, that was against but, Fulham, I think. Sorry, Fulham. Yeah. Uh, all the games are melding into one, basically. When we win, yeah. when things are kind of going well, you're like, oh, yeah, cool. I remember that. I remember that moment. Um, also helps that I'm watching too much football at the moment. Um but I think, should we go into questions? Uh, Femi, I think I've got a few starred already in chat box. If you do have any more questions, just fire them in the chat box and I'll pick them up. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Do you think that um, Martinelli, he's been playing better because of Trissard and now Jesus being back? Because I feel like I love Eddie. Not that I'm not trying to talk anything about him, but since Trissard, Trissard's been in and Jesus has been in, Martinelli's on fire. I feel like he's yeah. linking up with the with the left side a lot more because they have Saka and um, Odegaard on the right side, and now you have um, uh, Trissard on the left that's linking up with Martinelli, and and now Jesus is back, and they had that same you know that that what that that mind together that they play together with, and I feel like he's just playing he's just playing out of his skin right now. I think that's is there a link between that with with um, and Ketia not 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 linking with uh, Martinelli. For sure. I think that's definitely down to, yeah, Eddie just wants to drift out right um, because it's easier for him to score. It's where the opportunities come from. He loves to hit that near post. And with Saka creating, they've obviously got that connection. And that's what we've seen from Martinelli is he's just got isolated for, yeah. what, 10, 12 weeks whilst uh, Jesus has been out. Um, and yeah, was, uh, Trossard has done so well in the sense of he likes to sit in that pocket between left wing and behind the striker. And him being able to operate there is similar to what Jesus does yep. uh, and frees up Martinelli to go central. Um, and he becomes the outlet for Zinchenko. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's where we've seen. And I think any player we brought in could have probably have done that job if that's where they like to play. And we obviously identified that that's the key point. Um I don't think we'll go too heavy into grilling Josh on Trossard. I don't know, unless anybody's got millions of Trossard questions, go for it. I like my pie. I ate the pie already last night, so I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to bring it to you. Don't worry. It's all right. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm definitely just selecting what ice cream I'm having with it. I think I'm in that stage right now. Um, Josh, Josh, for our people in chat, thought that we highly overpaid for somebody who was going to be average. Uh, I, I, maybe that's a little yeah. harsh. He said... I said, he said he overpaid for him. I, I said, said if we won the league, then it was all right. But that's such a I cop definitely... out, though. Yeah, that's no, I did out. say, I did say that's he it, was it, very it, expensive it, for a guy who had eighteen months left on his deal. We're, we're getting the best out of him. That's what he said. We're, yeah, we're getting the yeah. best out of him. I, yeah. I, I, I always like Trissard. He's always giving us problems. Always somebody. I was like, I take him at Arsenal, you know. Um, his, his I like the I like his style, man. I didn't know he was so two footed, though. I can tell you that. I didn't realize how good on two footed and good his passing was. Mm -hmm. Arsenal's miss has has missed in the in the years when I first started watching Arsenal. Watching Arsenal, mm -hmm. their passing was so crisp, and that is one thing that has gone awry for mm -hmm. Arsenal. Their passing has been just like kind of just all over the place, and it's getting a lot better now. And I really appreciate that part of it as well. And Trissard yeah. came in, and he definitely is doing he's doing his bits. Keeping yeah. it, keeping it, keeping it going. Definitely, you can see that he's um, he's not attacking the player as often as he was at Brighton. He's you know, there's more opportunity for him. There are 
more options. He can play those passes. Um, so that's helping him, I think. Um, yeah, and obviously from what I saw in the last few months of him there, he clearly just didn't want to be at Brighton. Um, I think everybody could kind of see that. Um, if he's given yeah. space and time, he can he can punish teams. Um, Femi, we've got loads of questions now. Yeah, um, might as well just finish on the Trossard situation. So, question for you, Josh. Yeah. Avon said, snug, marry or avoid Trossard? Um, uh, I can't avoid him because I've bumped into him a number of times. Um, I'll marry him. Uh, I'll do that. I will marry him. He, uh, so long as he's now, he's moved to Arsenal, he's got a better taste in cars. He had a Maserati last time I saw him. And I mean, Snog, Femi, marry or avoid? Is that how you guys say it? Huh. Yeah. We are way more cruel in America. It's probably a kill in there somewhere, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. He's too, he's too useful for the title run. So I'm going to marry him and I'm going to be, I'm going to be a gold digger. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to group these these ones into one question. So there's a, there's a few yeah. questions about um, the Spursy, <laughs> Spursy lot. Uh, Sai says, how many trophies did Syria win or Conte win at Spurs? Uh, Peter, he says, how Spursy is it that their current manager hates Tottenham more than we do? <laughs> and then uh, Avon says, was the most painful aspect of Conte's meltdown that he was essentially right about the state of Tottenham? So I'm going to ask this and just group them all into one. Where were you when you saw that famous meltdown? <laughs> and what did you think? I'll go with Josh first. Oh, uh, yeah, I was in the kitchen, uh, and I think I actually no, was I in the kitchen or was I watching it on the way back? I'm trying to think when he actually when it was posted. I was either back from going back from the game on Sunday, or it was um, I was in the kitchen and I was like, I just need to watch this. I need to watch this. Conte has gone full Chiellini. We just it was amazing. It was basically correct uh and there is one kind of interesting thing that i still think is quite objectively funny about it is that daniel levy in the last 20 years since he's been there has taken tottenham from a club who basically were a nothing team to a team that now occasionally cha uh, challenges for the top four so he's actually done a lot with that team but still they've achieved nothing He's taken them from one end of mid table to the other, and that's it. Um, yeah, it, I think I've watched it too many times and I care to admit. But, uh, Dan, what did you reckon to it? I was on my couch and my buddy um, posted in a group I had, and I was like, There's no way he said that. <laughs> no way. It was just a post. I was like, There's no way he said that. He's like, Absolutely. I was like, oh, no. Oh, Meltdown City. What are you guys dealing with? But, I mean, we all knew it. What, he signed a, a year and a half contract? He wasn't staying there more than a year and a half. There's no way. He was out of there in a year and a half. Um, he had a chance to go. He had a chance to – he, he had a chance to – I don't know how I'm going to say this. A year and a half. And he had – I'm sorry, I lost my track of thought. Oh, that's uh. the craziness, man. Um, but you all, we all knew he was leaving. He had everybody thought he was going to do so good. He had the best the best signings of this of the summer. He had the best you know the best and, and he did nothing with it. The, as, as the players, the players, the players. Like who did whose fault is it? Come on, man. Like it's just such a Spursy thing, man. This yeah. I was in my house and I just thought it was a fake a, a, a fake news and it was sure shit real and that it, it, they're just imploding again. That's what they do. It's very easy. That's what they do. It was going to happen eventually. So funny. Travis, what, where were you? What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I rolled out of bed and I saw it in the group in the group chat and I just couldn't stop laughing. And I, I think there was a what the fuck and there was a oh shit in there as well when I'm watching it and I'm just I'm crying. And then I just instantly sent it to my other friends that you know, that aren't in that chat because everyone needed to see it. And I just said he's gone. He's he just he just got he he quit. The players are going to he's gone. Play. The play he's gone now. Yeah, he, he's not gone. Today. I didn't see oh, that. Yeah, no, no, no. He's like they're 
he's fully going to be sacked like very shortly. Well, yeah, oh, he's, yeah. Com- yeah, he's yeah, gone yeah, back yeah. to Italy. He just yeah. packed his bags and left straight away. <laughs> yes, they, yeah. haven't, they haven't announced. Have you seen that, that thing on, on him on, on, on the airplane? Is that really him on on Ryanair? Yeah, yeah he's on. Is that a yeah, airline on or something? Yeah. yeah. It's was that probably, really? I thought it was like some fake. Somebody was making up. No, uh, I think it was fake. Was that I not think, fake? No, that's he real. didn't take I any think, responsibility yes. for the situation oh, that they're in. Which is just insane to me. Like this that's guy. what I loved about it most. Yeah. That he just he didn't even look in the mirror and say. Do you know what's funny about this whole thing? He actually rejected them the first time when they tried to hire him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he came back exactly, and, and they went and back. back like, no, 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 no. Trust me. Come. I'll take the money. I'll take your money for what? Why not? Uh, he's playing I, such boring football. How can he not take some responsibility? Like, oh, because he's Antonio Conte. Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. He, a, that's, that's, you, know what, you know what Stan said in the chat about managers maneuvering to get set? Uh, yeah. I find this really fascinating because he's only got two months left on his contract. They actually are still fourth, no matter you know all the games yeah. in hand that everyone else has. <laughs> like, why would you? pay him off like I, I don't get it personally like i'll just make him suffer i mean it, it might be such a bad toxic atmosphere but, but what if they like, don't make uh, champions league money you think Le- levy wants that yeah, but then well if you don't make champions league and you have to pay him off then why you're still yeah. gonna lose both things aren't you so why yeah. pay him off i don't I, think I don't they're know. bringing anyone in I'd be surprised. Ryan Mason, probably, huh? For the rest That's of the season. Yeah, just leave him there. Absolutely um, ridiculous, no. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah um, let me let, let, let me ask um, a couple of questions about midfield. Um, yeah. Um, Han, Han Tiumi says, um, it's for Josh, but I'll ask it to everyone. Does does this new Casado deal mean he's going to stay at Brighton or is it just a pay rise? And then there's another question linked to that, which is which... And I'll ask this to everyone, actually. So I'll ask Josh the first one, and then the second one. Which player would you prefer us to sign, Caicedo or Rice? Um, funny enough, Josh, did you see the interview with the Brighton... Uh, is it Paul, Paul Barber? Barber? Paul yeah. Barber, and he's talking about Caicedo. I don't think... Uh, but, but, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anyone's getting him this summer. No. Uh, I don't think... Depending on which... European competition, Brighton finishing, because that's the expectation now is that they're going to finish in a European place. Mm-hmm. Um, the players are still aiming for Champions League, by the way. That fourth place is still open. Um, but yeah, Caicedo is, yeah, Caicedo is probably still there at least next season playing European football. My question is then what happens when he turns 23? Um, so he's 21 at the moment. That's when I think he'll make his move at 23. Um, that's where they'll be able to put up and again, again ask for probably a um a, a nine figure sum of money. It will be a hundred million. They will ask for that again. Um That's crazy. Yeah. Uh but I wouldn't that's do it. kind I wouldn't of do it. what you get. No, I I wouldn't look at it right now. Um that's why I think Jorginho was the perfect signing in the moment is um, I'm sure we should just sell Jorginho in the summer. First. Oh, I think yeah, he will go absolutely. in the summer, but he <laughs> does that? what he needed to do. Um, <laughs> points, uh, yeah. Yeah. But um, if you want me to also go, would I prefer Caicedo or Rice? Um, I'm really not sure about Declan Rice. Um, he doesn't... Every time I've gone in to try and do... You know the eye test of when you just see a player in the flesh, he has been shit every game I've seen him, which has annoyed the hell out of me because I want to see what the fuss is about. And every time I've seen him, he's been rubbish. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's that. <laughs> Most of it is, it's been against Brighton. Um, he was completely listless against uh, Brighton in that 4-0. Um, I just... That's, that's the problem I kind of got with it at the moment is... If that's who we're going after, great. I trust Arteta in kind of what he sees in a player. So in that side, I'm happy with it. And I have no idea where he'd play either in terms of does he play in the Parto position or does he play in the Xhaka position? Um, to me, or for me, if we're going to look and get another central midfielder, um, I want someone to come in for that Xhaka position. Um, and I don't think Rice is that player, which is what makes me wonder what the plan is there. 
Cars, I think trust think? for I think our Casado for 140, wherever people are quoting, is a ridiculous amount of money. I don't think he's worth that much right now. That's just that's, I know people just quote quote prices out, but 140 no, is way too much. No, no, seriously, that's what the chairman said. He said 70 it's, million it's, bid was for half of him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, but then Potter said uh, last summer that 40 million would get you one of his legs. So you know he's gone from 160 to 170 in just a season. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's one of those. It, it's basically uh, they don't want to sell him. It's simple as that. Uh, I, 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 like saw, Rice, I saw so. somebody saying that 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 soccer was worth 110 million. Like Arsenal have the two most expensive um, young yeah. players by 110 million. So and how is Casado worth more than soccer? There's no way. Is that just oh, that's like transfer market. Transfer market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you go transfer market, they'll have Casado at like yeah. 30 million or something. Yeah. So what's what? So what's soccer worth then at this point? Oh, I mean, he's priceless to me. I don't want anything for him. Yeah, he's priceless, really. Yeah. Yeah. He's. I reckon if Saka goes anywhere, he's getting very, very close to the. Is he Jude money? No, Neymar money. To Neymar money. Okay. Neymar money. Yeah, I I like Rice. I think he's a ball winner, and I think ultimately, I think we're going to see fourteen, thirteen teams doing the low block on us. Maybe twelve teams doing the low block on us. So that's even on a low end. That's twenty-four games a year where we're going to see a low block. I think uh, when asked a question about Saka earlier this year or <laughs> earlier this week, Arteta responded with, we've seen 22, uh, 26 low blocks so far this season, or 22 low blocks so far this season, 22 out of 26 games. And so I think what he wants to do is play a 2 2 6 in possession, ultimately, with six, six lanes, three on one side, three on the other side. And I think he wants to have two ball winners in front of Saliba and Gabriel. And I think Rice is the best ball winner out there. I think Rice yeah. next to Partey, is, there's no one's going to be able to transition against that. Yeah. With And if you do get past Partey and Rice, you have Saliba and Gabriel. And all four of them can progress the ball. And one thing you that I'll like I keep saying is when you're in the Champions League there's no there's no more resting players there's no more party will, oh yeah party won't play in the Champions League you'll play on Saturday you, you if he, if party can't play two games a week then you need a, a good enough player to step so if rice is going to be that player to do that role then and and what I'll say also about Declan rice is he's played under some of the worst managers you could ever play on the <laughs> you know, Boys in Southgate. Boys Boys in Southgate. Boys in Southgate. <laughs> exactly. You look at the players that have come to us, and you ne- like if if someone would have told you that Ben White, Ramsdale, th- these type of players would be transformational players for Arsenal, you, you when they signed, you would have laughed at that person. So I I just yeah. trust what they're doing. Even even, even the January window, you know, I I can't seriously. I I didn't. I was not happy with the window, but. They, everything that they seem to do, they know what they're doing. They, there's hardly any misses, and some of the misses that we've had, the Sambis, the Tavares, they're, they're low, low cost hits as well. And they're out on loan. They're not sitting on our bench like doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Those are the beginning days of, of, of Arteta as well. Those weren't like the, re- the most recent of Arteta's signings, and their two signings have been really, really well. Even the ones, all the players that we all wanted, we missed them. And everybody's all upset. And then the plays we got after him were that's where we're at right now. I mean, they're we all actually good. debated should we get Buendia um, yep. or everybody's Odegaard? Like, everybody's mad Buendia about or Odegaard? People Jeez. debated that. Madness, you know. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, you're right. You're right. <laughs> like, we haven't we haven't missed. Like, I mean, I'm I, I've been debating who I wanted more. I don't know much of Casado. Um, I've seen Rice a lot. I liked him in the world the lot the prior World Cup. Um, I've kind of lost my, my my faith in him, but when you bring him to Arsenal, that's a whole different monster. It's like Trussard, he looked like rubbish. He looked horrible in the World Cup, but now he comes to Arsenal. He left he left, a, he left Brighton, and now he looks high, he looks like a superstar. You know, it all depends on the team, and it depends on the person if they fit the team and the people they play around. Sometimes that's just how it goes, you know. And Arsenal, I mean Arteta and the and, and the coaching squad and 
Everybody they bring them in and they 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 bring in my family. We all treat my family and Eric has just been really good. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me let, let's let's close with this last question. Um, it's an interesting one. Um, I'll just give you. I'll I'll let you have one name each. Okay. Would you? Would anyone have Arsenal oh, going for? Oh, and not this eat? one. Sorry. No. I would Checking which question. One, no. <laughs> <laughs> would uh, Would anyone have Arsenal going for a Plan B striker? In the summer, a target man, perhaps um, Jesus, Trossard, Eddie, all of a similar profile. I'll ask it in two parts: um, keep or sell Balogun, and if you had a choice of another striker, who would it be? Uh, I'll go Travis first this time. Uh, I say keep Flo. Uh, he's looking so good over there, and when he was playing for us. Um, even those few games, I just I was telling the boys in the chat that this this kid has has it all. He can create his own shot, and he's got a he's got a good shot. And when you can create your own shot, you become the most dangerous man in the box because you can take it from anywhere and do something with it. But we'll see how it translates. You know, I think the French league translates the best to Premier League in terms of um, how well the players do on an average compared to Spain, Italy, and um, Germany. But if we didn't keep Balogun and we got someone, I know Josh would hate this, but I want Evan Ferguson. <laughs> Kid looks like he's got it all. 100 million. 18 years old. It's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Where did you pluck him from? Uh, Bohemians. They get, uh, they've got a 10% sell-on, I think, as well. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, go for it. Answer it. Balogun, if we do uh, Balogun, keep or sell, and option for a, t- a different type of striker, target man type striker. Um, we definitely need a a, a, a hitman striker, like a Drew type of guy that's big and strong and just goes up for the headers and all that stuff like that. But I, I think that Balogun needs to get a shot because if what if Balogun was just in France, if he was French. And nobody had him. If he wasn't on Arsenal's pay bill, on payroll, we'd be like, yo, we need to go get Valigan. He, he fits our profile. We're going for younger players. The strikers are all going for it. Everybody will keeping our, our age profile really young. But I don't see why we wouldn't keep Valigan. I think that Eddie, as much as I love him, much as I want him to do good, I think that we know what Eddie's going to be. Um, I'm not sure if we sell him or not or give him a loan. I'm not sure, but I want to see what Balinga could do in England. I, I think that he's just his movement's great. He has a lot of he he, he could create his own shot, like like Travis said. And I, I think we should definitely keep him. I, why why keep going? Like he's he's exactly he knows what Arsenal is. So I don't know who we, we, I'm not a very I don't I watch Arsenal, my guy. So I don't know I don't go in the, into the crates of any other teams. And I couldn't tell you. I could tell you he's not the guy. Lacuna Torres for Atlanta City. <laughs> not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. But um I think that um I, I think we should definitely give um Balogun a try though, man, for sure. I think you bring him back and like at least bring him on tour and see if you can score some goals. But like I said, like we you you, you change so many people out in this Arsenal team as it is right now, and we don't get the full potential of people. Like change one or two people and it, it we, we bring out the best in them. But when you change up when you do a whole uh, a Europa League side. It kind of kind of falls apart at the present moment with the, with the team that we have. So, but I'll, I'll love to see Balogun back. You know, Josh. Uh, I'm gonna say Balogun another loan. Um, so I would keep him, but I'd loan him out and give him another give him another season. Probably not in France. Probably in England. Have to be um, Prem. It would have to be. Yeah, prim. it would have to be Premier League. Um, and I think there's definitely a couple of teams I could think that would work in his style. Um, potentially maybe back to France if it's in a team that is playing in Europe a bit like what we did with Saliba you know did San Etienne did Nice did uh, Marseille playing in the Champions League so I think again doing that progressive loan um, what we do know about when we get our young players is they've got a hell of a number of minutes under their belt already in their career we're not plicking up a guy who's just had one good season um, and paying what 100 million from them after they played 30 professional games. Um, we are getting guys with serious minutes. You know, ben White was young, but 
had played five full professional seasons um and, and look at the rest of our signings they all meet that profile um so i would probably do the same with balligan continue his development get him playing champions league but in another side where he'll start for them i don't think you know we go into champions league and we say jesus eddie that's all right we're going with balligan for this um it's just not how the hierarchy set out um if I was going to go for a plan B style striker, though, um, I mean, if I didn't feel like we needed to get any reinforcement in midfield, we'd go for Osserman, Um, because why not? That's if you're going to go for a striker, you got you got to get a good guy in. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the kind of veg horsed um, group of target men that you could bring in at this moment in time. They're very few and far between. Um, otherwise you're taking a punt on a, a different kind of player um, I'd maybe have a look at if you buy uh, MLS him, uh, Jesus isn't even starting anymore no yeah, but that's it he's starting on the left or <laughs> Jesus is, there's so something Martinelli like, yeah. or Saka doesn't exactly. start anymore there's there's a hell of a thing one. if you bring him in um, and I don't, tr- I don't like trust it. people that score goals in Italy right now I don't know <laughs> Yeah. The, um, the other one I would probably have a look at is maybe we sneak into MLS. And I expect he'll probably play in the All Stars. Is um, is he a Jesus or is it Jesus Ferreira at uh, FC Dallas? Maybe have a look at him. He seems to be pretty. It, it seems to be doing something good there. Um, yeah. But you know, what? I'm sure I'll see him in US uh, in the national team during the international break and change my mind completely on him. What I'll say is this. On this subject, number one, I agree with you on Flo Balligan, and I know some people in the chat were not agreeing with that about loaning him out again. But what you got to remember is he's barely going to get any game time. Um, so what's the point of bringing him in and him being a third striker? There's just literally no point in that. So you're right, loan him out. The best player that I've seen play against Arsenal this season that's caused us the most problems, and last season as well and I will take him in a heartbeat is Ivan Tony. I will so take him. Uh, he, he listen, he, he's just he's not your conventional striker. I thought he was just a target man. He's more than a target man. He caused us so many problems. Gotcha. Saliba was so that's the first game that he was just defeated. He gave up trying to beat him in the air. He, he passed mm-hmm. the responsibility onto Thomas Party that game. He was so good against us, you know, let alone his goal. Just everything about about his performance that day was just brilliant. But um, he was smart that game though. He he won he was trying to make sure that he won the second ball instead of the first ball because he knew he wasn't able to win the first ball. Yeah. So it shows a little bit of maturity, I think. He, he roughed he up ra- he ran really over roughed him. up yeah. Saliba that game. Yeah, and did. then yeah, so no, uh, uh, that's me. That's me. Um uh, Mitrovic is definitely not in his class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him anywhere. C- can anywhere he play next season club. as well? Uh, I don't know how big that fine and uh, suspension is going to be for Mitrovic. Uh, he's too hot headed for me. Yeah, but yeah, I hand over to Josh. Actually, before I hand over to Josh, what how are you guys feeling about the MLS All Star announcement today? Um, for you guys out over there, that's pretty cool. I like that. I think they're playing in LA uh, after. And so, so, I might so fire, so fire stadium. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying oh, to it's not big yeah, enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not big enough. The SoFi Stadium, that's a oh, big I'm thing at the moment. City. It's only yeah. sixty. That, yeah. Well, it's at what sixty thousand or seventy thousand. Um, but the Rose Bowl is seven. Enough, it's a hundred hundred thousand at the Rose Bowl. Literally, just like three yeah. miles from. No, right but here. I think they were talking about the the pitch isn't big enough or something. Silly yeah, like pitch that. isn't oh, big enough. Yeah, so in order to get a football pitch into the SoFi Stadium, they have to drop the capacity below what they're required for the World Cup. So they, it can't be used I'm as a sure World Cup work. stadium. Sure Whole reason Kronk has probably built it, but who cares? I'm so sure they'll do it as a Rose Bowl now. Yeah. yeah, they'll figure it out. Yeah, so what are you, yeah. you guys going to try and get over to LA for the game, or you think about it, or no? I am. I'm going to DC. Try. I'm in LA. DC's, DC's on my side. I think I know. That, I mean, it will probably be a tour. That's probably just the first game they've announced, isn't it? Yeah, so they'll yeah, probably yeah. do a little. But they might stay on the West Coast this time. What do you think? No, they said they're doing the first game is in DC. 
the first oh, okay. thing, because they had that's a Matt Turner's old team. Yeah. So Matt Turner yeah. had that whole that whole little thing with uh with uh and Ketia and um um and, and, and Martinelli. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's gonna be I think it's in DC, right? Um Travis? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think I think it's, it's like it's gonna be in um in LA. It's from sure. the rumors. That's people are people are doing um already setting up events like yeah. in it. They haven't announced it, but they're talking about like the events that are gonna happen in LA. Okay. Cool. So cool. it's a far Stop. trip, man. LA, LA is four hours um, on yeah. plane. So not like England where he has to drive. It's so weird because <laughs> the dates, I'm coming back. I'm going to Vegas on the 4th of July and I'm okay. coming back. I'm coming back on the 12th. So I'll just miss them. Oh, yeah, you just oh, missed so. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would have gone as well. But yeah, no, I just wanted to check what you yeah, guys Yeah, no, were that's doing fine. There, but... I went the last time that they were in um, LA when. We played Chivas Mexico, and Ozil sat like a few rows behind me. Nice. nice. I didn't think he did away games, but uh... <laughs> he didn't play. That's why he was in the stands. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I hand it over to Josh to close us. Up. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's it's been it's been a great show. I think um, I'm sure I'm sure the chat box would tell me if we were doing something wrong or I was especially um, I've seen a few comments in there um, if you have right, spat on your desk or done anything um, about my comments about Balogun please clean up after yourself uh, you know Covid was not that far away uh, long ago you've got to be keep hygienic come on guys um, but yeah so thanks to uh, thanks Dan thanks Femi and thanks Travis for being on um, thank, you, Josh. thank you for putting the rocket up ABW's ass to uh, oh, really get was, a podcast I, like a, I know I just did it wasn't like a it was a it was a lot it's a lot of people shouting go and podcast we know danny isn't doing it at the moment and yeah shout out to danny i think uh, we can't shout do a podcast without just going hey danny i'm not gonna say <laughs> anymore i'm just gonna say hello you can do whatever you want to you want to say about things i wonder actually what pictures i've got um <laughs> i've got a cat picture actually no, i'm not gonna go too far because i know what kind of pictures danny keeps on this uh thing so I will just say to everybody, I don't know when we'll podcast next. I'm assuming Chris might do something in the interlo. Um, maybe, uh, I guess we are in the interlo already, but maybe something like Thursday. Um, I don't know. Now that I say that, he's got to do something because um, he's let us down. Um, what else can I think? Don't know. Don't know what else to say. We'll probably do something around the Leeds game. Um, and again, there's a week between games so we've got plenty of time to not organize a podcast um <laughs> but keep your eyes on the twitter uh carlo femi or i will be tweeting some stuff out at some point um and we always enjoy those interactions um and as phil says i think we just go out on this um although you've got the thing the wrong way around um no danny no aaron wambasaka fuck's sake phil um, right uh which outro am i going to go with i'm going to go with this one and uh yeah see you guys later as soon as i scored that goal i was fucking livid get down dog splendid business he nearly caught the bloody thing what are you talking about <laughs> so i've just eaten a full quiche well you don't often see him at him so when you see him in the supermarket they need to be swagged microwaved immediately and get the brown sauce on one bosh bob's your uncle never in doubt Like and subscribe, you cunts.